What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Crypto Airborne in the house, dropping you guys the latest and greatest cryptocurrency news and updates. Today is September 21st, 2022. And in today's video, we're going to be conducting a crypto market overview. The markets took a dump today. We got the FOMC meeting numbers coming out. And lastly, we're going to be talking about Voyager. Got some updates for you guys. If you think that's interesting, stick around. I'll tell you all about it. All right, guys, hopefully you're having a great day today. I sure am. On your way in, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button. Consider subscribing if you aren't subscribed and turn on those bell notifications so you get notified as soon as I upload a video. Again, it's the easiest thing you guys can do to help support my channel. So I know it's been a couple days. Uh, took that extra job, make some extra money, buy some more crypto during this bear market. This is the best time to accumulate, not financial advice. But we're going to do a quick crypto market overview. And again, if you guys do want to skip ahead to the in the video, wherever you want to, check the pinned comment down below where I put timestamps or throughout the video. Do it for you guys and viewing pleasure. All right, so let's jump into it. Market's not doing too well today. A little surprised because of the FOMC numbers and whatnot. It really wasn't such a crazy uh, 100 basis points like everyone said. It's pretty much what everyone... Uh, already expected, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So let me just refresh this real quick. So market is down about 2.6, 2 2.79% after it refreshes the last 24 hours. We got Bitcoin, dang, $18,414 right now, down about 2.29%. ETH's down about 6.19%, sitting at 1,242. We got BNB down about 0.79%. XRP's down 2.79%. Cardano down about 0.545%. Sit at 44 cents. They got that uh, hard fork coming up, the Vassal hard fork. So we'll see if uh, there's any price action to the upside or any buy the rumor, sell the news. Let's see. Today is September 21st. We do have a lot of different holidays going on. We got uh, International Day of Peace, Miniature Golf Day. We got National Chai Day, Hannah Day, Christina Day, National Opiate Awareness Day, Pecan or pecan, depending on what you guys say. What do you guys say? National Pecan Cookie Day, that's what I say. National School Backpack Awareness Day, World Alzheimer's Day, and World Gratitude Day. So there you have it for your September 21st holidays. All right, for crypto bubbles, for you visual people out there, let's go to the top 100. Let's take a look at the last day. Obviously, we've been a sea of red, but it looks like sell token is pumping a little bit. Sitting at $1.55, up about 7.4%. Take a look this past hour. It looks like market's doing a little recovery this last hour. I do have 8.19 p.m. Eastern Standard, so that's good to see. Looks like Chili's is leading the way at about 3.2%, and Raven up about 3.6% for your top 100 coins. Let's take a look at my favorites the last hour. We got Helium pumping up 2.2%. CKB's up 0.8%. Ada's up 1.3%. Siacoin up 1%. Take a look at the daily. Obviously, everything's red. We got Voyager token down about 5.8%. Currently looking at about 65 cents. CKB's down 7.1. Helium down 8.2. And Bitcoin down about 2.2%. Currently sitting at about $18,511. Fear Greed Index. We got to yesterday at a 23 in Extreme Fear. Uh, even though the markets did take a pretty big dump today, it only dropped about one point. Looking at about an Extreme Fear of 22 Total crypto market cap, we're at about $859.12 billion. Looks like we do have a big support right here, but man, if we break this $818 billion-ish support line, probably could be dump a little bit more. Let's look at CoinGecko. CoinGecko always has us a little bit higher. It's saying we're at about $937 billion, down about 2.4% the last 24 hours. Total crypto market cap, again, this is on the four hours. We are way oversold right here, and it looks like we did just go into the negative momentum territory on the MACD where that red did cross through that blue line right there. So there could be some more on the four-hour chart, at least, to the downside. Daily, far away from this Ichimoku cloud right here, so you guys could see hopefully some potential move to the upside because, you know, the, the the lines don't like to stay too far away from this Ichimoku cloud. It kind of goes when it gets too far, it gets a little bit closer back towards it. So just keep an eye on that. D 
DXY. So if you guys don't follow me or you stumbled across this video, I follow this. Whenever this is pumping, that's when the traditional and stock markets are down and vice versa. Right now, we're at pretty much an extreme high point, more than our last high that we had around the 12th of July, where we did hit about 109, 110. And I also want to do keep in mind that historically levels looking all the way back in, in the past, 105 to 110 has always been a support and resistance uh, for the DXY. We've literally been going straight parabolic since about the 20th of May in 2021. And I do want to go back to the weekly real quick and just show you guys that we have not seen these levels since let's see we're about right here since about june of 2002 absolutely crazy so when i go back to the daily i did draw out an elliott wave pattern here the one two the one two three four five i did move this three wave around i had it here potential we could have been topping out here but i just kind of redrew it so now we might be able to pump a little bit more to the upside since we are out of this this 110 resistance that we've had. So we have breaking above it. We could see some more move to the upside. The RSI, we are way overbought right here on the U.S. dollar. So, yeah, we got this pattern in play. We could see it still continue to pump, which wouldn't look good for the traditional and the crypto markets. All right, so Bitcoin. So we did have the FOMC meeting today. I'm going to just take a look at the one hour. You guys can see it pumped all the way up to about 19,948 at around 2 p.m. Eastern Standard, right when the numbers came out for the FOMC meeting. And we dropped all the way down to about 18,139. That's a measure move from our high all the way down to the wick low of about an 8.83% the downside within the last couple hours. So absolutely insane here's a little bit of bitcoin hopium from you from trader tardigrade he's saying that there is a pattern that's going on currently that we've seen in the past with bitcoin he said that it is following the same macro structure with a false breakout a breakout a first retest a second retest and then a markup so let's take a look at his charts real quick this is going back to 2012 and 2013 where we do have that false breakout to the lower trend line. And then we had the breakout of the upper trend line right here. We had the first retest dip, the second retest dip, and then boom, we ran up. Same thing happened around 2015, 2016. False breakout, lower trend line. We had the breakout to the upper trend line, the first retest, the second retest, and then boom, we had that run up all the way to the 2017 high. And now, ever since that 2017 high, we've been in this, looks like a ascending triangle i want to say which is which is bullish where now we had that false break to the lower trend line covid crash we had the break out of the upper trend line of that ascending triangle we had the bull run of 2021 we had the all-time high uh back well the first all-time high back in april 2021 and then we had the all-time high bitcoin back in november of 2021 and then most recently we had the second retest down here which was that 17.5 thousand I want to say, and then just recently we are on that second retest is what he's saying. Next move we could potentially see in is a big move to the upside. So there's your guys. Bitcoin hopium. I thought this was pretty interesting. I want to share it with you guys. And jumping to the first topic of discussion is the FOMC meeting numbers. And this guy put out a tweet just a couple hours ago. Late night thoughts on the Fed. Was there anyone that believed we will have lower hikes? No. So why did we dump? So it looks like the next lowered hikes will happen in November. So according to what I was reading just a bit ago, it was apparently about an 83% chance that it was going to be a 75 pace, base point uh, rate hike. And then the others, whatever percentage, 18% or whatever the heck it was, was going to be a 100 point basis point rate hike, which we haven't seen, I believe, since the early 80s, something crazy like that. So let's just jump into this quick article about the FOMC meeting. Uh, we Let's see, FOMC participants foresee GDP growth for 2022 to be slightly positive at 0.2%, while they project unemployment rate to hold below 4% at 3.8% for 2023. However, unemployment is set to rise above the level of 4.4%, while GDP is expected to reach 1.2%. Jerome Powell said that we anticipate that ongoing increases 
and interest rates will be appropriate. The pace of those increases will depend on incoming data, but at some point it will become appropriate to slow the pace of increases. And this is kind of a trend that I've noticed that he's been saying pretty much throughout the last couple of FOMC meetings that he's had that, hey, just got to wait for the data to come in and they will adjust accordingly. So Powell firmly believes that a tough stance will be necessary to curb down U.S. inflation before it becomes entrenched in the economy. He reiterated this position plenty of times throughout the press conference. With today's 75 basis point hike, U.S. interest rates reached 3.25%. This is the highest it's been since 2008. Insane. Last, the chairman of the U.S. Central Bank reiterated that he believes inflation, despite having come down since the peak of 9.1%, is still running too high. We need to keep doing these large increases. So let me know down in the comments, what do you guys think? It's absolutely insane that this guy has this much power to make moves in the whole world, economy, crypto markets, stock markets, just by what he says. 75 basis point rate hike. What do you guys think? You think inflation is finally coming down? That the rate hikes are working. You think the next FOMC meeting that they're going to raise it up to 100, something we haven't seen since the early 80s, or do you think it's just going to be another 75 rate basis or 75 basis point? I don't know. Let me know down below. All right. Next topic of discussion is Voyager. Where I'm at, 11 minutes. Okay, cool. So it might be a little bit longer video. So just uh, take a drink, grab a snack real quick, and. Let's talk about Voyager. So, the Voyager official community of unsecured creditors. What do you guys think about them? I don't know. I know they have to be silent with a lot of the crap they're saying. They did have their Twitter page go down just the other day, but they're back up right now. He said that they're back online after Twitter account suspension, which was overturned and appealed. The auction has just adjourned for the day and will pick up again tomorrow. That's apparently all they're saying. They've, it has been ending late, around 10, 11 Eastern Standard Time the last couple of days. The process for the auction is still continuing. There's been lots of rumors, lots of crazy stuff happening. One of which is, can you please address the story that broke today about the highest bid being just $50 million? Rumors, rumors. We'll talk about that here in a second. But, yeah, the Voyager Official Committee of Unsecu Unsecured Creditors. I forget the guy's name that's kind of leading it or whatever, but he was going back and forth with uh, DJ Crypto and ended up blocking him and whatnot. But uh, there are some people in the Voyager community that do have direct contact with him. But they're not really doing much for us as customers. They're not keep keeping us informed. And I know they got to keep quiet. I know they have to keep, keep their lips um, sealed. And uh, we want to maximize the amount of VGX. A lot of big holders, me as well. They're saying that a lot of these people bidding on it don't really care about it. And then we had a big push for writing emails to them and whatnot. And uh, I don't know. I don't know, really know what, what came of that. But uh, this news with the $50 million, uh, being the highest bid is just some FUD in my opinion. Peter Pineapple, who knows at this point, all info is leaks and speculation. I agree. So the first thing that uh, came out was Binance and FTX lead $50 million race to purchase Voyager's assets report. So... Crypto exchange Binance FTX reportedly, keyword reportedly, made the top bids of approximately $50 million each for the assets. I just don't see it, guys. I just don't. Binance's current bid is slightly higher than that offered by FTX, according to a Tuesday report by the Wall Street Journal. Fake news. Fake news. I don't trust the Wall Street Journal. This, who knows someone could have paid them to put this article out to cause the FUD totally be true citing sources familiar with the matter okay what does that mean the wall street journal fud i don't believe it so then other article companies are writing articles based off the wall street journal's sources fake news i think it's all fake news all right going back down real quick the winning bid is expected to be announced on september 29th although an announcement could come before that date you know there's all that drama going on between voyager and ftx where uh, they gave them the, uh, the loan, $75 million, and then now we're apparently getting back a loan from, uh, or that Voyager gave to FTX, which at one point was about $377 million. Now, at the current rate of the prices, is about $200 million. So this happened earlier this week. Alameda agreed to repay about $200 million worth of Bitcoin and Ethereum in exchange for $160 million in collateral Voyager had been holding. So let's jump into that article real quick. Alameda to repay $200 million in Bitcoin and Ethereum to bankrupt crypto broker 
Voyager. So, Alameda, the crypto quant trading firm co-founded by SBF, billionaire owned by crypto derivatives exchange FTX, owes Voyager approximately $200 million in an outstanding crypto loan. This amount originates from a line of credit that was worth $377 million before the market took a dump, obviously. The loan was initiated on September 20, September 2021. It was largely denominated. It was mostly Bitcoin and ETH and USDC. So for the filing, Alameda is going to return about 6,500 Bitcoin and about 51,000 ETH by September 30th this year. The court documents also revealed that Voyager will return the collateral tied to the loan, including 4.65 million FTT and 63.75 million SRM tokens. So it blows my mind reading this because Voyager is returning the collateral that they took from FTX, but the 3AC loan, they didn't take any collateral from 3AC. Insane. Insane, guys. This whole this whole thing is insane. I can't wait for it to be over. Uh, but, yeah. So, with them getting all of the $6,500 or 6,500 Bitcoin and 51,000 ETH, I think this definitely is going to play into the bidding process and the auction and who's making the top bid because this is going to actually close the hole a little bit, in my opinion. So, there is going to be not as big of a hole um, so the customers get the most amount of their assets back. Got a tweet from my buddy Sixfig. His opinion of the Voyager auction. He got grilled by VGX community last June in the tweet below. He says that Alameda owes Voyager $377 million. Well, at that time. Although right now, I do believe it's about $200 million according to the last article. Alameda and FTX carefully destroyed 3AC to destroy Invest Voyager. If FTX buys a Voyager for the $50 million, FTX gets to erase $327 million in debt, or more likely uh, $150 million, if I do my math right. So, what do you guys think Think about that one? I know he has done some deep diving with ICP and all the crazy stuff that FTX has done with uh, the launch of ICP and all the crazy stuff on that exchange. But uh, go, go check that out by him if you're interested in about that. But he's thinking that they're kind of doing the same thing to Voyager. I don't know. What do you guys think? All right, last but not least, I think there was some confusion here uh, that one of the hearings for Voyager has been pushed, I do believe, from October 10th now to October 19th, 2022. Whereas people last night were saying that the auction was going to end, or it was pushed from the 29th through the 19th let me just check real quick so the hearing date has moved from the 10th to the 19th of october but the auction is still set to conclude by september 29th so correct me if i'm wrong there in the comments down below but from my understanding that this is just a hearing that was pushed from the 10th to the 19th of october but the auction is still set to conclude on september 29th so that's the other docket change that came out in the strato filings last night and that's all I got for you guys. Just wanted to give you guys some quick updates about what's going on in the market, the big dump with the FOMC meeting, the crazy Voyager drama, rumors and speculations going on. If you guys know anything else crazy, let me know down in the comments below. I'd like to hear a uh, conversation going on about who you think is going to buy it. Is this maybe – I want Binance per personally to buy it, uh, in my opinion. I think it would help with their U.S. – Binance.us and expanding operations because Voyager already has a lot of the licenses and whatnot and all the the crypto coins, unlike Binance.us. So I think it would be good. And I also like the Binance CEO over SBF. So that's that's personally what I would like to see. What would you guys like to see? Another traditional finance buying them out or what? I'd be curious to hear your guys' thoughts. Again, go follow me on TikTok at Crypto Airborne. If you guys don't already, go give me a follow on Instagram at crypto underscore what is it? Yeah, crypto underscore and airborne. And last but not least, go give me a follow on Twitter, where I am the most active at crypto underscore airborne for all my latest and greatest news and updates. So that's going to do it, everyone. Again, smash that thumbs up button on your way out. Consider subscribing if you aren't. And turn on those notifications so you get notified as soon as I upload a video. And uh, if anything crazy happens, I'll be sure to keep you guys all updated. That's it. Have a great night. Crypto airborne. Out.